When it comes to graphics cards, a lot of people say this is the worst one ever released, and yet it is still the most popular graphics card ever released by Nvidia. And today, I'm going to be playing some games on it. Yes, because I am pro MEM PC and we do weird stuff like this here on the channel, I'm going to be playing games on the worst GPU ever released. Before I get into this video though, what is your first ever graphics card that you had in your gaming PC? In my first pre-built, I had this inside it in 2015 and it was an absolute terrible experience if I'm honest, but I was quite humble back then. If you're not familiar with this GPU, it is called the Nvidia GeForce GT210. This little thing launched all the way back in 2009 and it was never designed to be a gaming graphics card. Back in 2009, a lot of CPUs had either very weak integrated graphics or none at all. So you needed at least a very weak GPU just for HD video decoding and as a display output. Yes, this was on the market for this graphics card, full HD decoding. I know that doesn't seem like a lot these days, but remember in 2009, 2010, full HD was the next step up from 720p, which was quite popular at the time. So you could watch YouTube videos, as long as you had the internet for it, in full HD. But when it came to gaming, which I admit this thing was never designed for, it was absolutely rubbish back in 2009, and it's absolutely rubbish now. Even in 2015, six years after its launch, it could have been found brand new in the box for around 30 to 40 pounds here in the UK. And even then, I think that was a, not a great deal at all if i'm honest just imagine asking for a gpu for your birthday or for christmas back in 2015 2016 and you unboxed it and it was this thing and then you put it in your gaming pc and you was greeted with performance like this and this is one of the reasons why it is one of the most hated graphics cards to ever release a lot of people had this for their birthdays or for Christmas or something like that and then they were just greeted with absolutely terrible gaming performance and even some games won't even launch on this thing. The latest version of DirectX this supports is 10.1, it doesn't even support DirectX 11. That doesn't matter though because even if you're running an older game in DX 10.1 it still has 16 CUDA cores, yes that is 16. My CPU has double the processing threads. And not only that though, this version has DDR2 memory on it. Not DDR3, DDR2 and 512 megabytes worth of the stuff as well. Newer models did release with 1 gigabyte of DDR3 memory, which I'm sure did provide a pretty substantial gaming boost, but it's a GT210, it's not going to be amazing in any way but there are some good things about this graphics card and the main one is its form factor it's a very small graphics card so it will fit in pretty much any pc case and it only consumes 36 watts of power so so you can use this in literally any pc no matter the wattage on it and some models like this zotac one don't even come with a fan this thing is totally passive it gets up to about 75 degrees C under load, but that is pretty hot for a graphics card, especially one of this caliber, but it's got literally zero fans on it. So if you wanted a graphics card back in 2009 and you didn't want a game on it or you wanted to play very basic games like Minesweeper or something, the GT210 would have been a pretty decent buy at about £30. So enough of all that, we really care about the gaming performance here. Today I've put it into my testing system, which has a Ryzen 5 5600G, 16 gigabytes of CL17 3600 MHz DDR4 memory running in dual channel, a Sabrent 1 terabyte NVMe Gen 3 SSD, and an Asus Strix B550-F gaming. All testing has been done at various resolutions, but I'll put the resolution each game was tested on today. And there is no gameplay capture for today because this doesn't even have support for shadow play, which is a bit of a shame. I could have recorded on the CPU, but GTA 5 is the first game up today and I'm surprised by this because it actually ran. Albeit at 800 by 600, it's been a while since I played a game at this resolution. I don't miss this resolution either if I'm honest, it does not look good at all. And it was also on the lowest settings I could possibly set without configuring the INI files. This got 9 FPS on average with 8 FPS for the 1% low and by the time I finished benchmarking GTA 5, 
I felt noticeably ill if I'm honest because this was an absolute slideshow. One thing I also noticed is it crashed every time I opened the pause menu for some reason. I'm not too sure what that was about, but GTA 5 is technically playable on a GT 210. Next up is Minecraft Java Edition and this is a much more sensible game for the GT 210. Here I set it to 720p but I also installed Optifine, set the render distance to 8 chunks and the graphics quality to fast. This got 33 FPS on average with 21 FPS for the 1% low which is relatively decent performance all things considered. Usually I test out newer games like Dirt Rally 2 or Dirt 5 but here we are playing Dirt 3 and at 800 by 600 with the lowest preset it got 26 FPS on average with 22 FPS for the 1% low. Dirt 3 considering its age it launched back in 2011 does look like a very good game if you set it to the high settings. Here. It didn't look so good though. Modern Warfare 2 is up next and no that is not the 2022 one it is the 2009 one. Here we set it to 800 by 600 this is becoming a bit of a trend now with the lowest settings. This got 54 fps on average with 37 fps for the 1% low. So Call of Duty is playable here. It looks pretty garbage but you can still play it relatively fine I guess so if you wanted to play the older campaigns this might not be a bad show if you've got an old office PC lying around. Terraria is a game I'd never thought I'd test here on the channel as it's an easy to run 2D platforming adventure game, I guess that's the genre of it. But here I set it to 768p with the low settings. This got 48 FPS on average with 27 FPS for the 1% low. The game felt a lot smoother than what the 1% low was letting on so Performance was totally fine in Terraria and you can have a relatively decent time playing it. Fallout New Vegas is up next and this is a game that I tested in the original £65 PC gaming video and here I set it to the 720p with the low preset. This got 32 FPS on average with 20 FPS for the 1% low. It didn't look too bad if I'm honest, it looked a slightly worse than the Xbox 360 version so there is that. But Fallout New Vegas is totally playable on this graphics card. Last game up today is Half-Life 2. Here I set it to 768p with the low preset and it got 114 FPS on average. I was not expecting triple digits here today. And the 1% low was 1. I believe the 1% low is from a loading screen because there are just hidden loading screens in this game for some reason. I'm not sure what that was about. But performance was relatively fine. This is just an anomaly. So I'm surprised by a lot of the performance in these games today. I'm more surprised by the fact that they quote unquote ran, kind of walked if I'm honest, but this graphics card can technically run games like GTA 5, technically, even though it looks like a PowerPoint slideshow and the graphics were horrible and I felt very ill after testing GTA 5 on this thing if I'm honest, but technically it's playable. And that's why a lot of people hate this graphics card. Because by about Haswell on the Intel side, the integrated graphics did catch up quite a lot and then they surpassed the GT210 and even CPUs like the Ryzen 5 5600G has very competent onboard graphics where you could play esports games like Rainbow Six Siege, even Fortnite totally on the CPU itself. Which is why if you're on a very tight budget I recommend getting a Ryzen G series processor and then upgrading your graphics card down the line. This is way better than getting a very low end graphics card like a GT210 or a GT1030, something along those lines. But to be fair on the GT210 it was never designed to play games, it was always designed as a basic display adapter for decoding HD video and web browsing and word processing, simple tasks like that. And because of tasks like these, back in 2009 the GT210 was a perfectly viable graphics card for these types of applications, but now in 2023, but now in 2023 it's just simply a obsolete piece of technology which I'll probably just pull up on my shelf or something like that. So for gaming, this graphics card was garbage back in 2009 and it's even worse here in 2023. It has very little going for it now as even iGPUs like in the Intel CPUs and even the Ryzen 7000 series are more than competent enough to do basic tasks like video decoding, especially the Intel one. The video decoders on the Intel CPUs 
are very good. But if you just want to stream video on your PC and just write up Word documents and Excel spreadsheets and stuff like that, you don't need to go out and buy a graphics card like the GT 210 or GT 710 because it's just simply a waste of money. And if you're looking for a good gaming GPU and power consumption isn't your concern, a graphics card like the RX 470, 570 or even something like the GTX 1060 6 gig are a much better value in my opinion. Yes, they do cost a bit more and they consume a lot more power, but the gaming performance is insanely better than what you'd be getting from this little thing. So with all this being said, I'm going to leave the video here. If you like this video, like it, stay subscribed for more tech content, and I'll catch you in the next one.